Honda has had a record month selling cars in Australia, but not in a good way. Pushing the boundaries of peak bleakness, actually. And this time, things are so bad that Satan herself has taken a break from monitoring the HVAC system in hell to consider Honda's sales in May more broadly and how that might be better used to torment the damned in future. And it's only Wednesday. I'm Logan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap at Australia only. Website somewhere. Card. Honda once considered the BMW of the land of the rising sun before it projectile vomited its capacity for innovation across the room in the manner of Linda Blair. I've finally seen the sun set on its popularity in Australia, I think it's fair to say. The company sold just 814 cars in May, meaning pretend brands such as Renault, Volvo, Land Rover and BYD outsold the inventor of VTEC. This truly is remarkably the power of nightmares. Even more ignominiously, Volkswagen for losers, i.e. Skoda, the intermittently bankrupt but perennially mediocre Sanyong, and the downstairs compensation 4x4 factory, also known as Ram Trucks, appear jointly poised to overtake Honda in a sales three-way in the very near future. This video is sponsored by Olight. I've got three recommendations there for you today. Ideal for the car and the home shop is the Mighty Swivel. It's under 50 bucks, dude. It's a magnetic work light and a torch. You can hang it up with the inbuilt carabiner and it's USB-C rechargeable. And it swivels. Go figure. I love me a good swivel. I think deep down we all do. The Warrior Mini 2 now, it's the perfect EDC torch, at least... It is to me, and it has been for a couple of years now. I have tried sincerely to kill mine many times and failed miserably. It's death-proof, bright, waterproof, shock-resistant, and you can't really feel it in your pocket, mostly, which is perhaps the perfect determinant of EDC suitability. And finally, for the car, the Ute, the 4x4, Shetra, the Warrior X3, blazingly bright and dead simple to operate. Plus, it's got three super hard zirconium beads embedded into the bezel for rescue. Tempered glass car windows are notoriously difficult to get through, but if seconds count and it's one window separating life and death, the Warrior X3 can be a real asset. I hope that doesn't happen to you, but if it does, hey is 12% off the Olight range right now using the code in the description. I use my Warrior Mini 2 every day. It's just super useful, dude. Check the description for the links and the all-important 12% off code because Olight loves you via me, and I love you too, incidentally. And thanks to Olight for supporting this admittedly highbrow and somewhat, you know, intellectually elitist, but at times quite trash talky channel. Honda's sale of just 814 cars down under in May is the pot of failure at the end of a huge anti-rainbow of crap corporate decisions. This is the nightmare that company has been chasing so actively and so consistently for roughly 15 years now. In my estimation, nobody else is to blame. Like, if you spread turd of Great Dane on sourdough, perhaps with a cheeky dab of aioli plus some tomato cheese and rocket, don't go complaining to the government that your supper is something of a shit sandwich. For Honda, May 2023 represented a 43% sales apocalypse compared with May of 2022. It's also a 14.3% fall year to date, and that's in a market which just had its best May sales ever. Honda even beat Jaguar in the 
shit monthly sales sweepstakes. Imagine that. Sadly for Honda, the past four years have been a real roller coaster, albeit a roller coaster which only ever heads in one direction down. The Federal Chamber almost drowned in lubricant last week. May 2023 was that good for the car industry generally. The bread was so thick and the lobby group next door patched a hole in the fence, preventing Danish Fido from leaving his regular sandwich deposit on the Chamber's lawn. The sandwiches just tasted so much fresher. Go figure. Best May sales ever, dude. Lube me up, Scotty, said the car industry's Captain Kirk in Kingston. Off the record. Nobody actually said that, okay? It's just how I imagine that particular celebration going. 12% up year on year and almost 3% up on the previous best May ever, which was way back in 2017. That was before the pandemic, Jesus. They're going to need a lot of sanitizer in the days ahead in the um, teleportation chamber. And so will Honda, incidentally. But for exactly the opposite reason. Intra sales poopy doesn't get much more chronic and leaky than Honda's fall from grace, which kicked off in 2007, if memory serves, on the summit of Honda Australia's Sales Everest. Honda sold 60,529 vehicles in Shitsville of that year. Of course, it still had fun cars back then and street cred, and it innovated more or less, so that was different. Base Shitter Civic was a real Corolla competitor at the time too, and not the $47,000 drive-away abomination of consumer irrelevance, which it represents today. If Honda were an airliner, both engines suddenly caught fire out of the blue in 2008 and the pilot just bailed out. Sales plummeted by 50% in just the next four years. And over the next decade, they ultimately halved again. The last year, 14,000. That's a fall of more than 75% from the 2007 summit. This year, Honda is on track, if that's the right way to put it, for about 10,000 sales, optimistically. In the past two years, to stem the blood loss, Honda has gutted its model lineup and likewise eviscerated its dealer network. Today, former Honda dealerships are scattered across the nation in the manner of something in between an archaeological exhibit and a B-grade zombie apocalypse film set. Either way, dude, it's not a good look. Honda did what any self-respecting multinational corporation does when they're flying business class on the red eye to nowhere. They jumped on the buzzword generator and deployed a brand new online, quote, experience platform. I think they just meant website. A senior executive helpfully explained the new Honda Australia position, which was thankfully omitted from the Kama Sutra. In a statement, he said, Brand experience is the new competitive battleground, which is why we have shifted our focus from the auto industry norm of chasing volume to prioritising a quality customer experience. Just paraphrasing all of that for a moment, because it is quite wordy and hard to get through, I think it just means... Shit sales are kind of okay now. Like, who needs volume when you're mass-producing a low-margin product with extremely high capital cost? Dude. In other news, the sky no longer blue, trees no longer green, water no longer wet, and Scott Morrison, best prime minister ever. Yes. Unfortunately, erecting the new goalposts into these perverted new places on the playing field, also involved the deployment of a no-haggle fixed-price business model, which they call a, quote, Honda one-price promise, but which is unfortunately for consumers apparently just a shit-price guarantee, insofar as I can tell. A stratospheric price guarantee, to be kind. And I'm basing this on the following evidence. 
The cheapest new Civic you can buy in this country is $47,200. Drive away. And you can't negotiate. The cheapest Hyundai i30, by comparison, is about 27000 bucks. One of these vehicles is a top 10 seller in the Australian market. And the other one is the Honda Civic. Go figure. Why am I telling you this, okay? Well, if you buy a new car, you're kind of locked into the brand for the term of ownership, aren't you? You rely on the brand for support when anything goes wrong. You need a strong dealer network, strong parts supply, strong technical support, and strong consumer commitment. And frankly, Honda's just so shaky right now, so commercially unsustainable, that it doing a Holden and throwing the towel in is really just one telephone call from Japan away, isn't it? Like, what would they have to lose, really? And the answer, 814 cars a month. Honda, of course, makes roughly 4 million vehicles annually. 10,000 for Australia, minus the cost of operating here, the premises, the salaries, the shipping, blah, blah, blah. It hardly seems worth it, does it? Alternatively, Honda could perhaps do a Renault without warning and just hand the whole disaster to, I don't know, some half-assed independent importer. That might easily also happen. Just throw the corpse to an importer and hope they can scrape vestigial meat from the bones. Like, it's generally not a win for the consumer when this kind of thing happens. And I'm looking at you when I say that, Renault. To me, buying a Honda right now is simply too risky. It's like boarding Doom Air Flight 459 to Bali. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Doom Air 459 to Bali. Special thanks to our platinum frequent flyers from Honda Australia. At Doom Air, of course, we're really, really expensive and we'll probably crash any day now. But before we were so shit, we used to be called Qantas, which is why some of you misguided fools still love us.